So exercise 16 get, asks for the uh, three different things. It asks for a revenue function, a cost function, and a if the profit function is this stuff, for what values of n will the profit be greater than or equal to zero? So it's looking for this type of thing. Just as a guess, it's looking for this type of thing where there's a function, and it's looking for this interval here, okay? Where this, this curve here would be the profit greater than zero, in other words, y is greater than zero on this graph, and so it's looking for this interval. And so when we, if we come up with a quadratic and we come up with solutions for a quadratic, and we have two solutions, it'll probably be between the two solutions. And I can tell you that right now because this function is going to give us our quadratic and there's a negative here before the uh, the n coefficient and so I know it's going to be a downward opening parabola but we'll get back to that later first of all let's define a few things it talks about the price is given by this in other words price is a function of the number of units sold that's what n is n is the number of units sold each day so the more we sell the lower the price has to be because we've got a negative n here and n is the number sold. So we've got to understand that and there's some limits to the number that you can sell. You can only sell 90 a day at tops and you can't sell less than zero obviously. So the operating cost of the business is something else. That's, that's all about sales up here. In this sentence here, the operating cost of the business is $100 per day plus $20 in commission for each item sold. So that once again, the operating cost is also a function of n the number of units sold, but it's a different function. So it says to find the revenue function and the cost function. Let's start with that. Let's write this uh, price equals 36 minus 0.4 n and the restriction that n is between 0 and 90. So A, revenue. Revenue equals money in from sales. That's what revenue is. So A, the revenue function then, price as we know is this stuff here. So if we take the price and multiply it by the number of units sold, which is N, that gives us revenue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply this through and I've got 36n minus 0.4n squared. That's our revenue function. Okay, B, our cost function. Cost equals the money out from production. And it says, it says here that the operating cost of the business is $100 per day plus $20 in commission for each item sold. So $20 times the number of items sold plus the 100. In other words, $20 times the number sold, which was N, plus 100. That equals a cost. So we have our revenue function and our cost function. C two-part question. It says if the profit function is given by profit equals revenue minus cost, pretty straightforward, for what values of n will the profit be greater than or equal to zero? Well, let's just write this profit thing out a little bit differently here. Instead of profit equals revenue minus cost, I'm going to put in this for revenue and this for cost. 36n minus 0.4n squared that stuff, the revenue, minus the cost, which is 20n plus 100. So the profit then, if we take this all out of its, uh, out of its brackets, we get uh, 36n minus 0.4n squared minus 20n whoops, minus 100. And we can uh, clean this up a little bit. We'll start by Oh, well, first of all, yeah, let, let's clean this up a little bit. So profit equals 
negative point four n squared plus sixteen n minus one hundred. Now we want this stuff to be greater than or equal to zero. Right? Because that's what it asks. For what values of n will the profit be greater than or equal to zero? So if this is the profit, when will it be greater than or equal to zero? So I'm going to solve for this. And to solve for this, I'm just going to do a little bit of whipping around here. I'm going to move all this stuff over to the left hand side because I don't like this minus sign here, just my own bias, and that'll leave zero on the right, and we'll add 0.4n squared to the left hand side. We'll subtract 16n from both sides. We'll add 100 to both sides. And there's zero left over on the right hand side. So this still kind of ugly. So I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to multiply the whole thing through by 10. Multiply both sides by 10 that is. And I can divide both sides by 4. So n squared minus 40n plus 250. Less than or equal to 0. And that's about as simple as I'm going to be able to make it. Now I got to a point where I cannot factor. Unfortunately, this problem doesn't lend itself to factoring, so I'm going to have to bring on this ugly thing. I have to use the quadratic formula to try and figure out what the solutions are here. So negative b is negative negative 40. I'm going to go down onto this piece of paper here. So negative negative 40, also known as 40, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative 40 squared is 1600, minus 4 times 1 times 250. 4 times 250 is 1,000 all over 2 times 1, over 2. Okay. So simplifying that again, 40 plus or minus root 600 over 2. And root 600 is this root 600 equals the root of 100 times 6, which equals 10 root 6. Right? Because we can square root that, bring it to the outside. So that's 10 root 6. So we'll put that back in here. We've got 40 plus or minus 10 root 6 over 2. And we can take the 2 out of here, so that's 20 plus or minus 5 root 6. So 20 plus or minus 5 root 6 are our two values. And if we put them on a number line like this, let's put 0 here, let's put 90 here, because remember n has to be between 0 and 90. That was one of the restrictions that we got right off the top, right off the top there and is always between 0 and 90. And so 0 and 90 are on here, and over here is what we'll call 20 minus 5 root 6, and over here is 20 plus 5 root 6. And I don't know exactly what these numbers are, but I know that root 6 is going to be like 2.4 or something, and 5 times 2.4 is like like, I don't know, 12. So 20 minus 12, it'll be somewhere like 8-ish. Okay, I'm just going to say 8-ish. And if 5 root 6 is about 12, this will be somewhere around 32. Okay, those are just guesses. <coughs> if I had a calculator, I could find out exactly. So, the question is, is 0 in the solution set? Let's test it. And let's test it with this one right here. 0 minus 0 plus 250 less than or equal to 0. No, it's not. So it's not down here. Is 50 in the solution set? Well, let's see. That's 2,500 minus 2,000 plus 250 is about 750. So no, that's, that's not correct either. So it's not up here. So this is our solution set in here. Now, a point that worth making is that you cannot produce this number. 
you cannot produce 20 minus 5 root 6 units and you can't sell 20 minus 5 root 6 units you can only produce whole numbers of units <coughs> so well I don't know what this is if this was let's say 7.9 or something then we'd have to go up to 8 if it was 8.2 we'd have to go up to 9 remember because we can only sell whole units so if these were the whole units here then it would be this amount to this amount whatever the whole units are inside uh, and because I don't have a calculator I can't calculate 20 minus 5 root 6 but it's going to be somewhere around 8 to 32 and we would write it like this uh, if those are the right numbers but it depends on 20 plus 5 root 6 and what that is so hopefully ish that's uh, close to the answer